Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this episode of uh, Virtuell Värdag. In this episode I'm talking with Frode Finnes Larsson, the CTO of Distribution Innovation. And of course we're talking about distribution. How the landscape has changed because the consumers, today's consumers, demand a lot more than just five years back in both how it's delivered physically but of course also how it's delivered through software and the data around it. It's a really interesting and techy episode. I hope you guys like it. Hi, Frode. Hi. Thanks for uh, having time to come over here. Pleasure being here. I understand that you have a presentation later today as well. Yeah. What's it going to be about? What's the topic? Well, uh, it's uh, basically about innovation and uh, digital transformation. Mm. Uh, and the case is how the newspapers in Scandinavia has uh, transform their traditional newspaper distribution into a modern parcel business. Okay, that's quite a big topic to cover. Sure, yeah. <laughs> because one of the interesting parts about a newspaper business is it's been through so much disruption. Yeah. Like it's probably one of the companies or not companies but fields which have uh, seen the biggest impact. But for example podcasting, social media and sure. all of those topics. Yeah. So what are you covering in your presentation? So I will cover the physical distribution, mm. um, and um, so from creation of the paper until it's delivered yes, to yes. the door. So I work in a small, um, a medium-sized uh, software development company that mm. develops and builds um, software and technology for last mile distribution, mm. and our technology is used pretty much all over the Scandinavia for overnight delivery of newspapers. Mm. But as you know, the uh, circulation numbers and the volumes for physical uh, printed media is dropping. Um, and it's just a matter of time, or you can cut cost, but just to a certain extent, mm. before it's not possible to cut any more cost. And then uh, the media companies need to decide, okay, should we stop uh, distributing printed paper? Or should we do something else? And what the media houses in Scandinavia has done is to put other kinds of products into uh, the value chain. Like, for example? Uh, it all started with, uh, have you heard about the morning delivery, morningdelivering.no? It's no. a service. Oh yeah, those that have uh, fruit baskets and all that as well? Yes, that's mm. us actually. Um, it started as a hackathon mm. in, uh, in our tech company. Um, evolved to a project, uh, then a department, and then now a separate company, mm. where you can order breakfast, um, and uh, bakeries, uh, juice, etc., uh, on an app during the night, and the newspaper distribution network will then carry it out to you uh, a few hours later. Mm. So this started with that, and then it has evolved to different kinds of um, products, and now we have checkout modules uh, and freight selectors for online shops. Uh, it's possible to deliver or send parcels from your front door. Uh, the carriers are passing through 90% of all households in Norway and Sweden anyway, so they can simply pick up a parcel mm. and then uh, bring it to the, to the receiver. So this way... But do you have to be home? Uh, that. Not necessarily. Actually, I use that service today. Um, so I went into the website, uh, mytoday.no, mm -hmm. um, then register um, who's the sender and who's the receiver. Then you get a five-digit code. They put whatever you are going to send in a box, mm -hmm. a pizza box or whatever you have lying, and then put it either on your front door or in your mailbox. Um, and then the carrier will get a notification in his uh, delivery tool and we'll just simply pick it up. Okay. So it's no friction, it's, it's very consumer friendly uh, service and mm. you don't need to find a stamp and find uh, you know, these red boxes and uh, a post office. So we have a series of different kind of consumer oriented uh, parcel or, and delivery services. Mm. But everything is built on top of the traditional uh, news distribution network and actually sharing the costs, you know, uh, you have the newspapers sharing the cost with the parcels and vice versa. So that way uh, you can prolong the lifetime of the printed media at the same time get a share in a completely new growing market. Mm. Do you see that a lot of people are ordering the newspaper as well or just the breakfast? 
Uh, well, actually, those two services are completely, you know, not connected. Mm. Uh, so you don't need to have a newspaper subscription in order to to um, to buy the breakfast. But of course, the initial idea was that what kind of services uh, is is, is it's natural to bundle with the newspaper mm. and of course uh, a good exclusive breakfast Saturday morning uh, fresh fresh juice uh, and a cup of coffee and, and you know slow that's a perfect experience with, uh, yeah it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a very good uh, concept but mm. uh, people in Norway don't probably have that much time during the morning to mm. read the newspaper anymore that's why also a lot of the demand is dropping because we now consume media whenever we're able. So, for example, on the tram, on the tub, mm. when we basically have five minutes off during work, we mm. can just take our smartphone up yeah. and scroll through it. So how do you compete with that? Well, now we are in, into the content part of mm. the business, uh, which all the parts of um, all the media houses is covering. Um, but we see that the circulation number on subscriptions are not dropping as fast as you would expect. Mm. The retail circulation numbers is dropping a bit faster, the, the, the papers that you know buy out in kiosks. But in Norway, and we also see that some places uh, or around in, in Europe uh, are quite loyal to, to the subscription model mm. and appreciate um, the, the, the printed content and and the depth and the other angles that the mm. printed media has. But of course, it's, it's dropping. And, uh, uh, but you also see the media houses are bundling digital with, with physical. Mm. Uh, and we have models around that as well. In uh, the last mile delivery business, I know that we have a lot of technological innovation there as well, with both uh, Amazon delivering parcels all the way home with cameras and automatic locks. Mm. Can we expect the same in Norway in the we, near future? We have it. We already have it. Uh, so we have pilots now on digital locks in uh, several areas in Oslo. Mm. Um, and we also have pilots on it in Sweden. Um, so in Oslo alone, I think we have around 25, 30,000 physical keys. So you can understand that that is a, it's a challenge and a pain. I would like to you know, replace yep. that with digital locks. Uh, so, um, digital locks, pilots on it already, we are experimenting with uh, safe delivery boxes. If you buy an a iPhone uh, on an online shop, costs, I don't know, 30,000 or so, you don't want it lying on your front door. Uh, <laughs> so, you would like um, parcels like that to be delivered in, in either a safe deposit box mm. or when you are home. Um, so, but are we intending one delivery box per apartment or uh, like more communities? Currently, there, there are different models, and, mm. and all the big players are experimenting with different approaches. Um, we are delivering the technologies. We are quite agnostic on on which model that uh, will will you know uh, be uh, be the one that is preferred, but. Mm. For us, it's important that the carriers has uh, as frictionless experience as possible when they are delivering, because they are running out. It's 20 degrees. They have big gloves on. They have a little time. Many of them don't have much technology competence, mm. so they cannot go into to the smartphone and the delivery tool that they are using and try to find the right app. Mm, so everything needs to be integrated seamlessly, and that's pretty much our job to 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 make that happen. And how are you doing that? through machine learning, through visual recognition, or how do you make that experience seamless? Well, what we are delivering today is uh, a tool, uh, it's a smart app uh, application that uh, 15,000 uh, carriers are using every night. Mm. Uh, which it's up Here to in Norway? All over Scandinavia. Mm. So we have 90% of the market in Norway and Sweden, so it's pretty much the industry standard. Mm. Uh, almost half the market in Finland. And... Um, uh, in this application, you um, can see uh, or we optimize down to every delivery point, not on mm. addresses, but on the delivery point. Uh, the carrier can, can enter, uh, come to an apartment building. In the app, he see either which key to use or which code uh, to put in. To, to put in. Um, and then when he enters the apartment building, it is optimized uh, if he should take the elevator up and run down mm. or do the other way around. 
and that optimization depends also on what kind of product he is carrying. So um, on optimizing those routes, uh, it's um, a lot of advanced uh, algorithms and also machine learnings uh, mm. been used. Entering the door and opening the different uh, safety uh, box or mailbox deliveries depends on the different technologies. Some use Bluetooth because it's a relatively new area. Mm. Uh, so, so it depends actually on, on which kind of device we are integrated towards. And you integrate all of them into your platform. Well, yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the idea of what we're doing now. And, but if, if this market with, with physical, um, physical delivery boxes kind of explodes mm. and has a large variety of vendors, then it would be natural to if to see if somebody would like to take the position as the hub, mm. then we can integrate towards that instead. But all this is on a very early stage. So uh, our focus is to have efficient tool for last mile delivery and try to focus on that and, and not to you know grow to, to be a, mm. uh, to deliver everything. In last mile delivery, do you also include, for example, entering the home? Because that's also a natural step of the process, which Amazon is currently experimenting with. Yeah, uh, well, we have done some experimentation on that earlier, but that uh, the technology is there, so mm. it, it's more whether the market is ready, is, is ready or not. Um, if I would open my door to someone, it would be to a party that I trust. <laughs> um, I think the, the media houses and the newspaper distribution has an advantage there. You, you trust them. Of course, um, the, to, currently the newspaper is delivered during the night, mm. so I'm not sure if I want someone entering my door <laughs> during the night. But, but at least the, the newspaper companies, as a party, uh, I would trust mm. uh, much more than uh, you know, uh, just a distribution company around the corner. Hi everyone, and sorry for the short interruption. But if you come this far to the podcast, it means that we do something right here at Virtuel Verdeg. So I would love if you can just spend two, three seconds to rate, comment, or share this podcast. It would mean very much to me. So thank you, and back to the episode. Absolutely. But you still foresee that that's the way we are going. Well, I, th- I think it, it, we are very different there. Uh, mm. it also, if you, if you start to discuss privacy, people are very different. Uh, personally, I'm more of a technology optimist. So I would like my refrigerator to always be updated. I would mm. like the parcels to even taken out and put on place. I would remove all that friction. Uh, and if the price to pay for that is to open up the door and actually trust someone and then, of course, use different kind of technology to, to yep. strengthen that trust, um, cameras, etc. I would uh, totally do it. But because a lot of experts all are already claiming that we're past privacy area yeah. now. And I completely agree with that, mm. that if it's convenient, mm. we will absolutely do it. Yeah. So that's also quite interesting to ask, are you experimenting anything with, for example, drone delivery or that type of deliveries as well here in Norway or in Scandinavia? It will happen, sure, for sure. Uh, but it will be uh, very special use cases, I think. You will not see drones delivering in parcels. In, in parcels in urban areas. You will not see drones entering apartment buildings. But Why not? It, well, uh, simply because the technology is not there yet. Maybe in the future, you can see aut- autonomous delivery robots uh, and, uh, entering uh, apartment buildings and, and, and you know pushing the buttons on the elevators and stuff like that. Mm. But uh, we are not there yet. We went to Silicon Valley a couple of years ago to to look at some autonomous delivery robots. The one driving on um, on the, uh, yeah on the roads, um, and it's simply not ready to be used. Mm. Uh, that was uh, the one we looked at um, needed um, uh, an operator following it. And it was that loses some of the points. <laughs> and it also had some uh, operator sitting remote, watching mm. all the cameras, and it was able to deliver uh, one sandwich per half an hour. Uh, so it's it's not um, um, you know very not economical. There yet. No, 
but uh, of course, if nobody dare to to try, mm. uh, development will not happen. Mm. So um, uh, it will happen, uh, but um, not not yet. It's, uh, what do you see then? Uh, what will be the biggest changes in the next two, three, five years, which we can experience here in Norway with the last mile de- delivery? Uh, I think you will see an involvement in in locks mm. and areas to deliver. I think you will uh, see alternatives delivery points. Me, for example, uh, currently or traditionally, I have two delivery points. I have uh, my mailbox and my front door. Mm. But you can also uh, say that I think could be delivered to my work, of course. But if you take that even further, uh, it could be delivered in my garage. Mm. Uh, out in the garden, we have a house where the kids play in. Uh, it could be delivered inside there. Uh, behind the garage, we have a box where all uh, you know the, the uh, area with all the uh, the cushions for the outside furniture mm. is. Uh, you can have a Bluetooth lock on them, on that, and deliver there. Uh, my neighbor, I trust them, it could be delivered there. So um, every uh, consumer kind of manage a large set of delivery points and having the flexibility to to you know manage and, and govern and tell where things will be delivered there mm. I think we'll see a big uh, involvement in. Which uh, role does AI play in all of this? Um, and machine learning and those type of algorithms The things we are uh, using it to now is uh, well we have actually been using it for, for quite some time Mm. Uh, for instance, um, the sales forecast for retailers. Um, the different kiosks uh, and retailers do not order how many newspapers they are going to sell. We know how many they're going to sell depending on seasons, uh, locations, uh, yeah, weather, mm. everything. Um, and then we just send it to them. So that we have been doing for years. Um, now we are using AI for capacity planning. Um, you can imagine um, the difference from uh, printed media and subscription is, is very static. You know how large volume you will have every day. Mm. But now uh, this Sunday, Father's Day is coming up. It will explode the number of uh, you know groceries, bakeries, breads, etc. that will be sent in gifts. Uh, the holiday for um, for Christmas is booming. Uh, online business, mm. Black Friday, Black Week, Black Month. So the volumes are uh, uh, is varying uh, very much from from day to day, but also the different products that you put into value chain varies. So it's almost impossible to uh, make good predictions on how many people, what kind of cars you need without this data. Without this tech, mm. and also to calculate exact when a parcel is delivered. Um, uh, it's, it's it's hard because that depends on so many factors, mm. which car, which driver, which kind of products. And mm. how narrowly can you predict that? Because I see, for example, the grocery deliveries in Norway, they usually have like a four hour window. Yeah. And for many people, that's not acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> I can't sit and wait for my groceries in four hours at home. Well, Most it, people have more busy lives. It, it, it really depends, actually, and this is a, a, a still an early stage. Mm. So, so now the the aim is to get the correct, still at the correct day. Uh, <laughs> well, when you get your paper. Well, if you uh, if you want to buy something on uh, on Finn, mm. so a, a used ice axe or something, and you're going to Hemsedal to climb, mm. it's important for you to know whether you will get that axe or not. Yeah, so, life or death dependent. <laughs> so in, in, in the consumer to consumer market, it, it's still very difficult mm. to, to get uh, to get close uh, predictions. Uh, but uh, on the newspapers and in in more mature markets, mm. we can get that quite close. Now down to you know hour or or, or wow. maybe smaller. It's because we have more information. More information is more predictable, uh, and we see interesting thing in the book market that. If it's even though it's the same vendor, uh, if it is an English title, it takes longer time than than a Norwegian title to get delivered. I cannot explain <laughs> it, but, but when when you when you analyze the data, mm. you see strange patterns. 
and then uh, we need to try to understand why, but also use that as parameters to to predict. Uh, to, to predict yeah. mm, understand. And so. that's one of the things which we always also discuss when we discuss AI, because a lot of the predictions which AI makes, as you just said now, that English books mm. take a long time to deliver than Norwegian mm. books. Mm. Why? And <laughs> how do we use that? Mm. And how do we use this information to actually understand how the AI is thinking? Uh, well, we uh, we use that to to predict the delivery times, mm. of course, and and sometimes, especially when you use um, um, unsupervised um, learning, learning, um, mm. you can throw big data sets on it, and you can find patterns. Uh, that you can then use to create even better models uh, with supervised learning and other kinds of uh, of algorithms. Mm. Um, because sometimes when there are so many parameters, it's, it's difficult to to, f to see the patterns uh, up front. Do you believe that we will have more and more AI in every type of business, or is there some businesses that are restricted for human only? Like for well, example, you still, as you said, need to have a human that deliver packages. We won't yeah. see robots with the first. Not with the first, but um, well, I think first of all, now AI is still a relatively big hype. Mm. Uh, there's a limited. Uh, yeah. You should be very careful about which use cases you use. Um, still, it's um, it's hard to to determine whether your model is correct or not. Mm. Um, so we have some baseline data that we can co compare with, of course. Uh, but in other areas, we don't have it. It still requires some, some trust. And some uh, testing. And, 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 and <laughs> even though it's, it's, uh, uh, it's AI, humans need to understand what they are doing, mm. right? So the big limitation still and will be for years is to to actually utilize this kind of technology. Um, so, um, but you have the typical use cases, large data sets, a lot of parameters where it's difficult for our mind to, you know, see the, get the full picture. Mm. Um, uh, optimization of, um, in areas where you have big data sets, all those are, are yeah, obviously. And for people that are listening to this podcast now, if they want to learn more about last uh, minute or la last mile, sorry, delivery, yeah. Yeah. where can they do that? Uh, last mile delivery uh, is one of the big, really big topics, uh, and a lot of the startups in Silicon Valley and other mm. other areas uh, is around last mile. So um, you can start with uh, Mr. Google. Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a massive and very interesting area. Mm. Uh, but of course, um, if there are someone in in um, in Scandinavia or in Europe that uh, are interested in what we are doing, mm. uh, I'm happy to to contact me in distribution innovation. Um, we are experimenting a lot and have a very systematic approach to innovation that I'm quite mm. proud of uh, and, and happy to, to share that as well uh, on, on how we actually are are um, uh, experimenting with technology at the same time as we need to deliver uh, high quality service mm. so yeah that's really cool mm. okay thank you Froda for having the time my pleasure